all year long. We've kicked off all of our Friday shows with just some of those things like what to watch yeah. with Dale. He tells us what we do need to watch, what we don't need to watch, <laughs> whether you're going out to the movie mm -hmm. theaters or you're just trying to sit at home and find a show that may be worth watching. Yeah, and I was just talking to Kenny Beck about this too, and, and you'll appreciate hearing this, Dale. We were talking about you, and I said, your job is so important these <laughs> days because there's so many yes. options that movie and theater and everything reviewers are, are so crucial to us right now. So that first question is Babylon. How was it? Well, you know, it's the end of the year, so we're getting all the award contenders coming out, and Babylon was considered a strong one until people saw it. Ooh. It's over three hours, and I will say, Damien Chazelle directed it. He did La La Land, won the Academy Award for directing it. He's a very talented filmmaker, and he's trying to make a saga of early Hollywood depravity, where drugs, alcohol, everything was done to excess. And the problem is, when you have a three-hour movie about excess, it feels excessive. <laughs> And, and you kind of can't escape it. There are some very good performances. Uh, Brad Pitt is actually the best thing in the movie, and his character is rather touching. But the entire film is just over the top in every aspect, and you feel exhausted by the end of it. And that's not how you want to feel at the end of a should-be groundbreaking film that really shows what the silent film era was like and the transition to talking pictures. It just gets lost in a, a blizzard of drugs and movement. And the film literally left me tired. Really? <laughs> oh my goodness, I was looking forward to seeing this and now you're really mm. straying me away because I didn't realize well, it was that long. Jeez. It is that long and it's that intense. And again, there's some good things in it. That's why I'm giving it three popcorns. Mm. But I can't really go to the four level because it's just too much in one package. Okay, three popcorns. I think that's that's reasonable. Yes. Okay, I'm still going to maybe give it a try if I have a <laughs> chunk of time. Yeah. All right, Dale, how about The Fablemans? What is this? Well, this is Steven Spielberg's autobiography. In effect, you know, this is the guy who directed Jaws, E.T., Schindler's List, considered by many the best American director of the latter part of the 20th century, and he's still making films, but they're not resonating with audiences. His last film, which was an updated version of West Side Story, was a bomb, and The Fablemans is not doing well, because it really doesn't have a lot to offer us other than the saga of how Steven Spielberg fell in love with movies. This is an extremely autobiographical film, uh, he goes, his parents go through a divorce, he moves from Phoenix to L.A., back to Phoenix. So it's kind of a childhood story with him running a camera the entire time. Oh. And although you develop some uh, affinity for the characters, and Michelle Williams playing his mother is very, very good. I think she might get an Oscar nomination for this role. She's extremely sympathetic. But the film is really about watching a boy fall in love with movies. And if that's not your interest, this film isn't going to hold much for you. Okay. I'm going to guess that you gave it three popcorns? Again, good okay. intention, some very good performances, but it's a very minor film about a, a, a guy who most people don't know and don't care about. Ooh. All right, Dale. Well, let's hope that Black Butterflies got a better note from you. It's on Netflix, so it's something we can watch over the holiday weekend mm -hmm. for sure. Yes, and this is six episodes, so it's easy to get through. It is in French, so you have subtitles. I think they also have a dubbed version. But I really enjoyed this. It's a journalist is called by a mass murderer who says, I want to confess all my crimes to you in a book that you can write. Mm. And as these conversations go on, the imagination of the writer is set afire, and we also go into the past and watch this character commit his murders. And he does so in a, in a very non-American way, uh, very violent, and yet this cat and mouse between the journalist and the murderer is fascinating. And this film had, this series, excuse me, had the best twist that I did not see coming at all, and it really made the entire series jump off the screen. So I would say if you're up for a real 
plot surprise. Check out Black Butterflies. It's extremely well acted, very well made, and one of the best series I've seen near the end of the year. Oh, wow. wow, Dale. And so, wow, four popcorns have just popped up on our screen. So you're really giving this your highest honor. I am because it was a very engrossing series. It kept our attention every episode and the twist was wild. Oh, I love mm -hmm. twists. How long are the episodes, Dale? They're uh, less than an hour. Most are okay. between okay, 45 cool. and 55 minutes. Okay. It's doable. Uh, you probably get this asked all the time. Do you have a favorite show or movie of the year? Can you narrow it down? Yeah, I thought about this. There was a fantastic documentary that I gave four popcorns to called 13 Lives, which was directed okay. by Ron Howard about the rescue of the Thai swimming mm. team from the caves in Thailand. Yes. That was absolutely the best true life movie I've seen all year. I was also a big fan of Tar with Kate Blanchett. Mm. Not okay. a movie for everybody, but it's beautifully made. And she gives, in my mind, the absolute best performance of the entire year. Oh, So those two are at the top of my list. For streaming series, there were really two. Bad Sisters, which I loved because it was so diabolical. And then for All Mankind, the alternate reality series that's been on Apple about the space program, mm -hmm. which turned out to be about much more than the space program. So I would say those are some of my favorites. You know, it's been a lot of watching. <laughs> a lot of watching during the pandemic. And I don't think we're coming out of it. You know, I see all the numbers of the people are streaming uh, more than ever. So I think this is going to continue. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dale, thank you so much always for joining us every Friday. And if you enjoyed this weekly segment, folks at home, consider visiting Dale's website. It's on your screen, dalempollock.com. Dale, happy new year. Yes. Have a great one. And if you needed any refreshers on Dale's suggestions for this week, they are on your screen now. Babylon, The Fablemans, and Black Butterflies on Netflix.